This is Mr. Atkinson, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the first semester World History One research project. This is specifically the project in which students are going to be looking at an important era in the history of a civilization. This would be ancient civilizations through yeah, the early 1800s. Students are going to get to choose the particular civilization that they want to research and then do an in-depth examination and put together a research project that discusses and lays out the significant features that constitute an early or ancient civilization. And I've broken this down in the directions on the course requirement sheet, but I wanted to take some time to go through these different areas to clarify common questions and potential misconceptions that I get from students. What you're going to be doing is looking at the main features that constitute what historians and anthropologists, archaeologists have considered to be the key points or focus points of what makes up a civilization. And I've made a list and it's on a course requirement sheet. And some of the things that you'll be looking into when you're researching your ancient civilization will include but will not necessarily be limited to some of the cities. These would be important cities or major places where people of that civilization lived or traded. Basically the focal points of these civilizations. The economy would be a second major point that you would look at. You would want to look to see, was this civilization a money economy? Did they use a money-based system? Uh, was it more of a barter economy? Did they have an economy based on trading goods for services, goods for goods, services for services? What made up their economy uh, and how did it function on a general level in this instance? The third point is the social structure of the civilization. The social structure, what I mean by that is, are there classes of people? You might think of like a pyramid structure when you're thinking of the social hierarchy of a particular civilization. At the top, you'd have a ruler or a set of rulers who tend to rule over an entire area, a land, a kingdom. And so as you get down towards the wider part of the pyramid you go from ruler to maybe a group of rulers or like a senate in the case of the Roman Empire then you get down into more of the merchants, traders, artisans, people who were middle class or middle upper class from there you get down to the farming class and then you might get to the bottom of that where you have the peasants, serfs, slaves, those types of people and that social structure is what you're looking at. Look at all the components of the social structure of the particular civilization you choose. The fourth point you're going to look at is the language. What did they speak? Maybe where did it originate from? Were there different variations of this language? Language is a key component of civilization and so you want to look at at least what they spoke, maybe what they write, and where it possibly came from or what it might have evolved into. The next major component you're looking at is government. What kind of a government structure did they have? Did they have one ruler that ruled over everyone? Did they have a ruler with a, another sub-ruling class, as in the case of ancient Greece? and the Roman Empire, uh, where you do have an emperor, and then you have the Senate underneath them. So what was, the, how did the government operate, and who ruled over that civilization? The next major point is religion. Uh, religion is so crucial and such a key element to civilizations and is still a major element of civilization today. One of the reasons we see the conflict we see around the world. What is the religion that your civilization practiced? How significant was that religion? The religion in some instances may align very closely with the government and the social structure of your civilization. If you do, for instance, maybe a Middle Eastern culture or civilization that involves the Islamic religion, you'll see a lot of parallels between the religion and the government and the social structure. So discuss the religion and the significance, importance that was replaced on religion during this time period. 
the next component is writing. Writing would go in with that language aspect because they would be writing similar to the way they spoke. So was their writing a special form of writing? You've got early civilizations developing writing at this time. If this is a brand new writing style that's being introduced for the first time in world history, you definitely want to discuss that topic because you have some forms of early writings that eventually led to the evolution of the way we write today and the way that other languages write their alphabet and constitute their words and letters and so forth. So you want to discuss how did they write down different things throughout their time period, uh, throughout this period in history. It's how historians a lot of the times are able to interpret what history was like, what a civilization was like at that time. There are two more components, the first being literature. There are several key pieces of literature, uh, both fiction and nonfiction, throughout world history. There are some that are specific to different cultures. So if you've chosen a civilization or culture that has significant literature involved in it, you want to highlight those pieces of literature uh, because they tend to have long-lasting uh, significance throughout history and have kind of stood that test of time as opposed to just a general piece of writing or a general book. Um, we're talking more about the significant pieces of literature here. So if you were focusing on uh, maybe the Roman time period, if you wanted to look at, say, pieces of the Bible, for instance, uh, that would be one way that literature would come into play, or the writing of the Quran in Islamic culture, or other pieces of literature that maybe aren't religious related but are still significant. The final component that you're going to look at with this project is the art component. There are several very well-known pieces of art from all around the world, all different ancient civilizations. So you want to look at some of those key pieces of art. Are they paintings? Are they sculptures? What are they? Can you find images of them? This is a piece where you want to appeal to the visual aspect of this presentation. Feel free to find images on the internet to either print out or to embed into a PowerPoint presentation or a Prezi presentation. Make sure that these images, again, are cited along with all of your other information. But this visual adds a nice touch to your project. And also, some civilizations, art was very significant. So again, you want to look at the different pieces of art. If there are, gather what you can on that. So I've walked you through the main components that I'm looking for in this project. You want to try to find as much information on each of these main pieces as possible. I did mention that some of them will parallel or run, almost seem like they're one and the same with maybe literature and writing or writing and language or religion and government. Some of them seem to have a little bit of a parallel, but you definitely still need to look for all of those key components and highlight as much of those components as possible throughout your project. In terms of presentation for this project, there are several different presentation methods that could be done. And we do have a scoring rubric that uh, I will give you when you start the project that is meant to score just about any method of presentation. Common methods of student presentation include writing an essay or a research paper would be one way you could do it. You could put together a more multimedia driven presentation. PowerPoint is a very popular platform. You can do a lot with PowerPoint. If you choose to do a PowerPoint, I'd expect to see several components of the PowerPoint come into play and that would include adding images, adding transitions to the slide, adding animation, picking a common theme. So you want to make it visually appealing as well. Prezi is another online presentation tool that you can use which is a good one to explore and try out and there are several others. If you have one that I haven't mentioned feel free to bring it to my attention because I want this to be meaningful to, the, to you the student both in the content that you're looking at as well as the way you present it. The more meaningful this project is, the more you're going to remember and the easier of a time you're going to have putting it together for the class. I didn't really get into what you could choose for a topic, but a lot of students will ask me what potential topics are available, and there are several. 
but I want to make just a general list of some of the most popular and the ones that I would think are probably the easier to find information on. Now you're not limited to anything in particular and uh, feel free to think outside the box. The more creative you get, the better. You know, the more interesting it is for me to look at and grade these projects. And you just know that you're putting something very original together. So some different choices might include ancient Egypt. I would choose either the old, the middle, or the new kingdom. Ancient India, you have the Kushan, the Gupta, or the Marayan civilizations. If you looked at ancient China, there are several here. You have the Shang, the Zhou, the Qin, the Han, Tang, the Song, the Ming. You could look at different ancient Greece civilizations. Sparta and Athens are probably the two most well-known. The Roman Empire in general would be a good one. There are a few early African civilizations you could look at. Ghana, Mali, for instance, would be two. Feudalist Europe. You could look at Mesoamerican civilizations, including the Mayans, Incas, Aztecs. One of those three would be fine. Uh, the Italian Renaissance, popular this for this particular project as well. Uh, just a couple more. The Ottoman Empire, the Safavids, which both of those are in the Middle East during the time period 1600s to 1800s-ish. And then finally, Tokugawa, Japan. Again, this is just a limited list, but it does give you an idea of some of the possibilities that you could choose from. Feel free to choose any topic, make it meaningful to you, uh, choose a presentation method that's also meaningful to you so that this project is meaningful and hopefully you enjoy putting it together. Please see me with any questions you've got and uh, reference the rubric throughout the project to ensure that you are putting together a quality project and getting the grade that you ho hopefully uh, deserve when this thing's all said and done. Thanks for taking that time to listen.